<coughs> talk to God. Thank Him for your little house on the periphery, its splendid view of the wildflowers in summer, and the nervous fork prints of deer in that same field after a snowstorm. Thank Him even for the monotony that drives us to make and destroy and dissect what otherwise would be merely the lush, unnamed world. Ease into your misgivings. Ask him if in his weakness he was ever responsible for a pettiness. Some weather, say, brought him to show who's boss, <laughs> when no one seems sufficiently moved by a sunset or the shape of an egg. Ask him if when he gave us desire, he had underestimated its power. And when, if ever, did he realize love is not inspired by obedience. Be respectful when you confess to him you began to redefine heaven as you discovered certain pleasures. And sympathize with how sad it is that awe has been replaced by small enthusiasms. That you're aware that things just aren't the same these days. That you wish for him a few evenings of the old stunned silence. Maybe it will be possible then to ask, why the sorry state of affairs? Why after so much hatefulness done in his name, no list of corrections on some rectory door? Remember to thank him for the silkworm, apples in season, photosynthesis, the northern lights, and be sincere. But let it be known you're willing to suffer only in proportion to your errors, not one unfair moment more. Insist on this as if it could be granted, not one moment more. Several years ago I did a... Uh, book called Rifts and Reciprocities, which was a collection of, of paragraphs, prose paragraphs, that were tangentially related. And for years I would only read the, the pairing, but now I don't care. So uh, I'm going to start with a pairing, uh, uh, Scapegoat and Criminal. I'll read a couple of individual ones. Scapegoat. It's the Day of Atonement, and Aaron, Aaron has a brilliant idea. Two goats as offerings to the Lord. One he kills as a personal atonement for himself and his house. The other is the scapegoat. He lays both hands on his head, confessing the sins of the people, and sends it off into the wilderness. Poor goats. Lucky, unburdened. It's easy to see why such an idea caught on. There's a burnt offering, too, involving a ram. In the face of the ineffable, Aaron tries to cover all bases. But we're most interested in the goat that bears our large and small mistakes and carries them away from us. Leviticus knew how to tell a story, but here's what was never reported. The Lord saw the goat in the wilderness stumbling, half dead. He said to it, a goat's life is an awful thing. That was not my intention. What they've done to you is just one more of their sins. Mm -hmm. This is its companion, criminal. <clears throat> I suspect at least some of you are like me. You, it's just a matter of, of a, lot, a little bit of luck here, an inch here. We'd be in jail. Uh, yeah, really close. And also, if you haven't done something you've imagined it, I imagine. Uh, criminal. Born wrong. Could be as simple as that. Wrong parents, wrong country, or born anywhere. Eminently decent, but on the wrong side of a bad law. Then there's the luck that separates forgotten incident from criminal one. Like the time I accidentally set the corner lot ablaze, a nasty wind that day. No witnesses. I think two of the children I might have killed had they timed their carelessness just right. A trace of liquor on my breath, their ball rolling into the street, my car going slightly faster than slow. Fingerprinted, front paged. Instead, a normal evening at home, a citizen nearly upright. Aren't most of us caught or not responsible for some kind of choice? And of course, certain criminals calculate, plan, hide in the bushes, off to the books. So little separates me from them. Send us off into the wilderness without a goat, bearing our own burdens. Or maybe we deserve worse. 
or just to be left alone. We probably have more than one destiny, but one of them for sure is to meet up with ourselves. No Lord, no one to condemn or forgive. Well, okay. Loose one here. for the Facebook crowd, who have, who have many few friends by my lights, uh, uh, acquaintances, not friends, a friend after all is someone with whom you need not discuss certain important subjects, though often you do, nor do you have to clarify the status of your relationship except when you must. Your good news doesn't bother him too much. Bad news brings out the empathetic best in you both. And each of you knows the small misfortunes to keep to yourself. To be just an acquaintance is normal enough, but terrible to be an acquaintance when you want to be a friend. Terrible when one person is thinking, friend, the other acquaintance. And after a long separation, those rapid, uncomfortable pats on the back when they hug. Show me a back pattern, I'll show you an acquaintance lost among his intuitions whose body's Morse code is doubt, doubt, doubt. At a party full of acquaintances is almost as bad. What do we say after we say what we usually say? Better to be a stranger with small hopes than a plan. Mm -hmm.